everybody. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I, I would like to uh, actually uh, present some uh, old news. This is uh, about a study that we did. Uh, it was published in 2016, uh, but uh, we didn't really have uh, uh, the possibility to, to uh, propagate it a bit more. So and, and uh, it's, it's about the idea is uh, analyzing uh, settlement <coughs> dynamics, which is a fancy fancy word to say how settlement settlements uh, or, or human settlement behavior uh, changed over time. Uh, and uh, actually, on, on last year's EAA, uh, there, there were some, uh, during the discussions, there, there were some uh, suggestions that, oh, we might want to try this. And I said, oh, we have done this in 2016, but nobody knows. Uh, so I, I decided to do a bit of a PR. So mm -hmm. first, first to, to say something about what uh, what I mean under under uh, archaeological theory, and uh, why I think it's in, it's important for, uh, when I'm, uh, dealing with uh, spatial data. Then I, I will uh, talk about uh, interpreting the evidence. So how we, how do we get from uh, archaeological evidence to actually uh, talking about uh, human activities in the past? Uh, then I will try to briefly explain what the evidence density estimation function is, and then uh, a practical example of it in implementation. So you, you might find uh, something quite uh, practical at the, at the end of the presentation. So first, uh, to the theory, uh, the, this approach is based on the theory of uh, community areas of ancient Neustupni, which uh, basically states that what, what we observe are so-called settlement area. It's, it's archaeological components that we excavate, uh, we register them, we describe them, and they, they contain all the, all the artifacts, all the evidence, and they represent a, a, an imprint of uh, past community areas that existed uh, at, at this location. And there, there are, of course, there are some transformations and uh, uh, which, for which we have to account for. So this is a basic, basic statement, basic assumption that individual finds are points of archaeological evidence and they are a result of past human activity and it's the optimistic uh, belief that we can use, use them to study past human behavior. Uh, and that variations in spatial temporal distribution of this evidence uh, to some degree mirror changes of the actual settlement patterns. And we can infer on the, on the settlement dynamics by, by studying this, uh, this evidence and how it changes. So our, our original uh, motivation actually was, was of, course, of course, there has to be a scientific question, but often in archaeology you have data, and we had lo lots of uh, data on, on settlement sites, which lied since, since uh, at least the 90s or even earlier in, in digitized form in the archives and it's, you see it's 100, uh, over 120,000 records of uh, archaeological action, actions with associated archaeological dating, uh, localization, there is some indication of degree of accuracy. So uh, we wanted to, know, wanted to find out what, what to do uh, with this data. Also there is a growing number of radiocarbon databases and we see efforts of uh, summing actually summing uh, radiocarbon data to produce uh, temporal frequency distribution curves to, to infer on, uh, on population uh, uh, or demography even. We, we don't speak in our, uh, so me and, and uh, Dagmar Dreslerova about demography because I think it's a, it's a very, very strong belief that we can, what, what we see is settlement densities, not uh, people densities, yet, not yet. Okay, so this is just a screenshot of the article, and you are welcome to, to look at it, if you want closer details. So let's, let's uh, I, I will try to explain the, the, the function, the, the, the method, by, on an example. So let's say we have a, some sort of field survey, and evidence is found, so a, a fragment, or it could be anything. So this fragment, if, of course, is uh, uh, recorded. So it, it gets uh, spatial coordinates, uh, it gets uh, 
temporal coordinates, so it's, it's dated. Doesn't matter if it's uh, archaeological dating, and ty type of type of chronology, or if it's uh, scientific dating, radiocarbon dendrochronology. We have some uh, temporal coordinates. Then what's it, what's important? We have some some degree of spatial accuracy. Of course, it can be GPS uh, GPS coordinates, which where this is almost uh, uh, irrelevant, whether it's a it's an area or, or a point. But uh, with uh, lots of databases have just location accuracy on the cadaster. So you have a very wide dispersion of the uncertainty. Uh, next, uh, there is the temporal accuracy. Of course, if it's archaeological dating, you have some, some uh, mm, uh, uncertainty stemming from the length of the interval of the dating. Or if it's a C14 dating, you have the, the standard uh, deviation given um, by the, by the uh, laboratory that, that did the dating. And so this is, this is just the archaeological evidence. But what's it important to keep in mind, uh, in accordance with the settlement area theory, that this, this find actually represents uh, evidence of a settlement or any area of settlement activity that existed. And we don't know in which part of that area the, the find was located. So, and what we are interested in is the settlement uh, area itself. Uh, so, how to how to uh, take that into account? So, let's we, we know that that this settlement had some radius. I, I'm just going to use the word settlement, not area of settlement activities. It's easier. Uh, so, it has it has some some radius. So, it's it's an area in space. But also, the settlement had some duration. We have to. We don't assume that the set settlement lasted for one year, uh, and th that evidence can come from any any time and any place in that uh, settlement. So, of course, uh, we, we don't know where the, where the center lies. So, so the, the, the image might look like this, or it might look like this. There, there has to be some overlap, but it's a. Uh, it's, so it's two volumes in uh, space and time that, that are somehow somehow uh, uh, related. And uh, the way to statistically assess this is to is to integrate over over uh, space and time. So uh, the evidence estimation function uh, uh, calculates the probability that, that the side of uh, activities producing the observed type of evidence was present at the specific coordinates in space and time, given the spatial temporal coordinates and measurement uncertainties of observed evidence and an expected radius and duration of these sites. So, in simple words, it gives us a, a probabilistic map of settlement sites uh, for any any um, arbitrary uh, time slice that we, that we choose. Um, this is. Uh, Quickly, how, how the how the spatial so the, it has it has two components it has a spatial component and a temporal component and uh, so the spatial the spatial component there, there is the uh, the part of the it, it's it's a it's a function uh, this, this represents the probability distribution in space so the center is given given by by the, the location of the find of, of the evidence. That around it we have a region of uh, uniform probability that's just given given by the area area of the of the uh, radius of accuracy of, of the of the location, and then then we have a region that's given by the by the size of the expect, expected settlement. So we have to let's say by expert knowledge determine or give give, give it plug in some some uh, expected uh, uh, diameter or radius of the settlement. Uh, this this uh, this is the integrated. Uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into that since we don't have so much time. Okay, uh, the temporal component. We have two types of evidence. We we can have uh, archaeologically dated dated settlement where we are dealing with uh, uniform probabilities. Again, this is this is for the re registration of the find. This is the, the interval of the dating, and then we have some uh, uh, decreasing uh, probabilities uh, for for. To account for the, the duration of the settlement, so the, the settlement would have be begin here and ended here, uh, but also any, anywhere on this on this uh, scale or in that interval. For radiocarbon dating, it's uh, it's uh, similar, but but 
here we are we are dealing with the actual probability distribution that's that's uh, produced by the by the calibration of the of the radiocarbon data. So this is a way to this is a way to combine the data to to uh, create to come come to some some uh, probabilities that can be then further combined and. So the resulting spatial temporal probability density is uh, uh, is a result of multi multiplying the spatial and the temporal component, and then the the probabilities from the from standing from the single points of evidence is uh, uh, is combined using the Hopper's rule for co concurrent uh, testimony. So this uh, this also eliminates the. Uh, Let's say the, the the bias that or, or um, there would be a unnecessary intensification if we were to just sum the evidence. Then we would have if, if we have some area with with lot but which was very well uh, ex, uh, explored, we would have peaks in in apparent density. But uh, that would be that would be a bias. So um, okay, the result if if we apply this function to to our data set, this is just uh, so late points in, in space which are dated and assign either either archaeological or, or scientific dating. Uh, we can interpolate them in space and time and we can produce uh, time slices like this, uh, which where, where all, all these biases that I mentioned are already uh, uh, taken into account. And we, we get probability maps uh, which which we can then use to further work with the evidence in a correct way. So we can we can do environmental studies. We can look at uh, site densities. So we can uh, look at how how the population dynamics uh, changed. And you see there is oh, this is just an, an example region, but you see some, sometimes in some 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 uh, time slices there is uh, there is shifts. So so we see something like how how the how the population or how the, how the site uh, density moves in, in space. Um, so, just to sum up, why, why is this method better than just using distribution maps or uh, C14 summations? It takes spatial and temporal uncertainty into account. Uh, it models uh, settlements at vo volumes in time and space, so it's according with uh, archaeological theory. It needs no spatial or temporal binning of the input data. Uh, it allows for combined use of archaeologically and radiocarbon dated evidence, so we get much much more evidence to, to work with, uh, and produces easy to use probabilistic maps and can be summed to analyze uh, fluctuations in uh, settlement density over time. So this is just a glimpse for, for uh, Bohemia. We, we applied this for, for the whole uh, archaeological map of the Czech Republic, and uh, we were able to study how, how the, the settlement density uh, Changed over time in different regions, and uh, there uh, turned out to be quite interesting uh, regional variations. So, to to conclude, or, or at, at the end, I, I promised uh, something uh, practical. Uh, I created a, a QGIS uh, plugin, uh, which is relatively easy to use. Uh, you can you can find it on uh, on using uh, QGIS. So. First, of course, you need you need your data. You, you need your uh, uh, spatial data prepared as a point file. Uh, it has to indicate the accuracy in meters, the, the mean of the dating, uh, the earth uncertainty, and the dating the dating type. So it's either uniform probability distribution for archaeological dating or normal probability distribution (NPD) for uh, C14 dating. Uh, then you, you, you just in install this plugin by searching for EDE interpolation and uh, you just select which fields to use. Uh, model parameters, so expected settlement du duration, settlement diameter, uh, output parameters, what, what time steps uh, you want to, the slice to create in. Uh, you can put some restraints on it and pretty colors. And also you can, uh, you can specify a CSV file where the summation of the, of the results will be uh, stored. So gener generates produces uh, time slices like this, adds them to the, uh, to the map as raster layers. Uh, you can uh, just switch with the, between them. It also produces uh, uh, geotip uh, time slices. So these, these are in, in floating point uh, accuracy and you can use them for, for further analysis. 
and also it produces a rendered version which can be used to produce these nice uh, animations. And uh, uh, lastly, there is the summation in the CSV file. So you have the date, BPBC, uh, sum, sum value for, it, it's in the, the highest possible temporal resolution that the radiocarbon calibration curve uh, permits. And uh, this could be then used, for example, as a proxy for uh, exploring uh, fluctuations in settlement uh, density. So uh, thank you for your attention. Here are some links uh, if you want to uh, try this out yourself.